Hi. When I was preparing the next topic, I realized that fortunately we cannot talk about it without first talking about benchmarking algorithms, which is a bit maybe outside of our scope, but we need to know it anyways. So um, first things first, I want to say that benchmarking is hard. And unfortunately, like the problems with benchmarks can lead uh, to me not even not knowing about them for a while. Right, so it is very possible that some of the benchmarks I'm showing you are incorrect and I just don't know about it. Uh, let's cover some of the basics. Like we're gonna be using a micro benchmarking library, Google Benchmark. What micro benchmarking library will do for us is first of all, um, so it, it, it works like this here. You have a loop and everything inside that loop is measured. Right. Uh, the measurement result will be consistent between runs and the micro benchmarking library will decide how many times to run it. Uh, Google Benchmark is used by most people. Uh, there's a fantastic talk by Chandler Caruso that showcases the library and how he can he uses it. However, like if what's inside your loop is not uh, satisfactory for some reason, like you will not get meaningful results. Let's start with this. So uh, this is my favorite example. This is a benchmark for STD merge. It merges 2000 integers and you know, I have some number. Okay, I'm going to take this benchmark and I'm going to copy paste it four times. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, in all those cases, we will generate exactly the same code and we will run on exactly the same data. However, the difference in times between the first and the second one, and same in third and fourth, will be about three and a half times. How does that happen? Uh, a person I know, Alexander Monakov, looked at this and he says this is uh, likely uh, to be a branch predictor, right? Uh, if we increase the size from 2,000 elements to, you know, 10 times, right, 20,000, then we will see that the difference goes away. And so he thinks, based on his research, that uh, basically, in a good case, branch predictor manages to remember all of the branches. And in the best case, it can't. Right, and um, the reason why on the same data sometimes branch predictor can remember things and can kind of can't is because branch predictor depends on the addresses, right? And so the position of this code will be different from the position of this code. And uh, so in, in the first case, branch predictor might be able to remember, and in the second case, he might it might mix two branches together. Okay. I don't want to go into many details about it. Uh, you can read the blog post by Denis Bachwalov, like says Denis Bachwalov, right? Uh, you can watch a video uh, from an LLVM conference by Zia Anzari. Uh, it was a great talk. And there is a fantastic talk by Emery Berger. All of them talk in different details about code alignment issues, which is performance issues that occur from uh, positions your code being different. Okay. Uh, what can we do about it? Right. So first things first, my approach only works for functions that are force in line, right? So they should be in line, there should be no recursions, no function calls. Uh, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna inline them uh, multiple times and we're gonna try to align that for multiple uh, different alignments. Right. So uh, we're gonna pass this option Right, this is an LVM option. I believe there's a GCC version of this option. This will align all functions to 128 bytes. Right. The idea here is that uh, I don't think there is a single uh, like alignment effect that can occur on the sizes bigger than 64 bytes. Right, so 64 bytes should cover it. And I talked to Denis Bachwalov about it. He also thinks that 64 bytes should be enough. And so we align all to 128, so they don't affect each other. And then we're going to, in each of the copies of the benchmark, we're gonna copy the benchmark 64 times, and then in each of the copies of the benchmarks, we're gonna do a different alignment. How do we do a different alignment? Well, we're gonna use a technique known as a no-op slide. No-op is a instruction that doesn't do anything, uh, and it should be one byte in size. So I'm gonna do one of them, in the, uh, like zero of them in the first copy of the benchmark, one of them in the second, like two in the third, and so on. Uh, right, and that way I can test all the different alignments. 
Here is an example of how it looks for transform, right? So this is one copy of the transform, right? And we scroll up. Let's see, you see no op, no op, like three no ops, right? Always scroll more up. We'll find the previous version of transform. And we'll see also two no ops, right? So when we measure all of them and we get all the data, we can aggregate it and analyze it together. And hopefully we will deal with code alignment issues.